시청자 여러분 안녕하세요. Greetings everyone. This is Prostodontics on Friday, which addresses various prostodontic steps in implant treatment and side effects. I'm MC Dr. Cho In-ho. Today, we are going to address digital dentistry, which is very popular these days. Dr. Lee Soo-young of Seoul Line Dental Clinic is going to give us a lecture under the title Paradigm Shift to Digital Dentistry. In 2021, this is the first lecture. Digital dentistry has been the hot potato these days. And I am honored to have you here. I'm honored to be here. Before we begin, can you briefly explain about your lecture? Wherever you go, people talk about digital technology. Digital dentistry is very popular these days. I'm sure some of you already use digital technology. However, some of you may just may have taken a step back to observe what's going on. As a clinician who started slightly before the others, I would like to talk about digital dentistry in an easy manner. I have high expectations. Thank you. For those of you watching on the dental side, on the right, there is a chat screen and real-time communication can be done. Feel free to leave your questions and these will be addressed during the Q&A session. Today we have a special live pop-up event. After you log in to dental site, as you watch Prostodontics on Friday, a pop-up screen may pop up. When you click on Event Participation button, you automatically apply for the lucky draw, of which 10 lucky winners will get free coffee. This is your chance to enjoy the live lecture and get Starbucks coffee coupon. I look forward to your attention and interest. Now let's bring the stage to Dr. Lee Soo Young for his awesome lecture. Greetings, I am Dr. Lee Soo Young. As Professor mentioned just now, Paradigm Shift to Digital Dentistry is the title of my lecture. I would like to share my digital experience as a person who has started just slightly ahead of the others. This is the first lecture in its five series and as shown, I'm going to talk about digital dentistry and I'm going to explain what digital is and why it is so popular. This is not something that has come out of the blue and why is it so popular these days and I want to explain why. I would like to talk about how dentists can use the digital technology. In conclusion, I'm going to briefly introduce the lecture that's going to be on next time. First, let's talk about the digital world. I think we're living in a digital world as shown. The poster is for awesome meeting next week. It says future of dentistry. Digital technology is the theme of Austin's meeting. And it's not this year alone. For the past five years, all over the world, in awesome meetings, the theme was always in regards to digital technology. Austin has been working on this end under the slogan, the leader of digital dentistry. As shown, it is the Austin AIC lectures that are available. Most of the titles talk about digital dentistry. This shows that digital dentistry is all the hype. And it's not just about Austin. Most implant companies in Korea all talk about a digital dentistry. Uh, you can see digital technology everywhere. And some posters say that 
If you procrastinate further, you may fall behind. It sounds almost like a threat. What is digital technology and what has gotten people so obsessed? Let's look at the definition first. Digital technology describes electronic technology that generates, stores, and processes data. It's an electronic technology, and it can be divided into two, positive and non-positive. Positive is represented by the number 1 and non-positive by number 0. It is a format of data, which consists of zeros and ones. You store and process the data and move on to the next step. And that is called digital technology. By digital, when I ask people this question, what digital technology means to them, let's ask Google. What is digital? Once typed in, you can see opinions on digital technology across the world. This is without Korean subtitles, so I'm going to skip, and due to time constraint, I'm going to summarize what they say. It is the latest, accurate, and related to computer, and less cumbersome. It may be related to robot. These were the responses. And that is true indeed. The process of processing data consisting of ones and zeros cannot be done by hand, and robotic machine or other devices need to process it. And this can also be the definition of digital technology. What's the difference between analog and digital? And this is my favorite way of explaining it, the camera. I used to be in a photo club. Actually, if you look at face value, it's not very different. But if you look at the back, it's quite different. Analog camera uses film. You take photo and, and develop them. You get a film, a physical object. In terms of digital, the data is stored in memory card, and the memory card cannot be seen or touched. If you look using computer, you can see that it consists of zeros and ones and is a set of digital data. Digital technology and dentistry, is it new? No. The x-ray, which we use daily, some people still use analog method using film, and other people use... It looks similar, but it's not film. What is the difference? The difference lies in how it is developed. In the case of analog, you develop it, and you, there are a series of physical processes involved. In the case of digital, you just need to do laser scanning to get data, like this. Some people do not use a film type, but use a sensor type, digital PA. Such digital PA is used. Not just these kind of x-rays, but we have been using this using file to measure the root canal. This kind of technology has been used since long time ago. The apex locator is also a part of digital technology. You go in using file. 3 millimeter, 2 millimeter apex has been reached. The measurements are informed, and this is a type of digital device with computer. The PA with such sensor has been used since 2005. Those have been around since then, and that is a digital device. In the case of Apex Locator, was launched in 1995, and it, people have been using it for over 25 years. 
When you make a ceramic prosthesis, the oral scanner milling machine is combined in that device and that was first launched in 1985. The device that you see on screen right now was first introduced in 1990. Specific group of people used them, most people didn't, but some people did. Awesome uses three shape a lot and it was first established in July 17, 2000. It was established on Constitutional Day and it is one of the most important companies that produces devices and softwares related to digital technology across the world. You may think that this is not something that is relevant to you. Although people talk about digital technology, it feels uh, so distant and some people may find it very vague. However, clinically, most of you use zirconia. I'm sure most of you use zirconia crowns. We have moved on from PFM. Now, people use a zirconia. Developments have been made. This zirconia cannot be made with buildup. There is a fusion of zirconia and porcelain called PFZ, but even coping can be made only with the milling technology. So indirectly, you're already experiencing digital technology. The milling machine was introduced locally since 2002, and it has been used more frequently since. So in some ways, you're already using digital technology. Can I jump in and ask you a question? Of course. Digital technology has been applied in dentistry for quite some time. Yes, approximately 30 years. Recently, compared to the past, people are talking about digital technology more in the dental field. All implant companies have jumped in to develop digital technology. Is there a reason for that? I was about to talk on this issue. It was the second in my contents. And I'm sure my contents will help you understand why. As you mentioned, it has been around for over 30 years, but now people are talking more about digital technology and we have been using zirconia for almost 20 years. Why are people obsessed about digital technologies these days? I'll tell you my opinion first is advancement in technology. Digital technological advance. Accuracy and precision has improved from scanner to milling machine, 3D printer, the digital workflow process has improved greatly in precision and accuracy. What I mean by accurate is that it is correct. And by precise, it is consistent and this can be repeated without deviation. That's called precision. The devices have better accuracy and precision so that they can be applied clinically. And that is why people are talking more about digital technology as shown on the screen. On the far right, compared to that, the net looks tighter on the left. When you open the digital data, it looks like a polygon covered in mesh. The tighter it becomes, the truer the data becomes. In the past, data was lacking and it was very much filled with holes. Recently, the net has become so tight that people would not be able to differentiate it with their naked eyes. The accuracy required by dental field is very high. When you take impression, it needs to be within 20 or 30 microns in order to have meaning over rubber impression. And it needs to accomplish that for us to move on to the next step, like casting. If oral scanner cannot accomplish that, it's not worth doing it in the first place. The scanners available today provide much higher accuracy. 
When I talk about accuracy, I give this example. The analog clocks, we have them in my house, so do I. Do you remember this? This was first introduced when I went to elementary school and I found it astonishing. The numbers from elementary school kid perspective, the analog clock is very hard to read, but the digital clock is so much easier because you see the numbers. However, you see that there are limitations here. Can you tell me what time it is? It's about 10.08, 32 seconds. The first digital clock, in other words, the flip clock only told us that it was 10.08. In terms of accuracy, it fell behind the analog clock. If you express this in data, you see smooth curves in the case of analog, however, in the case of digital, it was not very tight and it was rather rough compared to the analog technology. And that's why many people thought digital was not on par with analog. With continual advancement, digital technology now showed the seconds. 10.08 and 32 seconds. However, the analog seems much more accurate because it's slightly more than 32 seconds, but slightly less than 33 seconds. So analog seems to be a step ahead. With advancement in digital technology, you can see even finer detail, one hundredth of a second here. Having seen this, many people start to think that digital technology started to go beyond analog skills in terms of accuracy. Similar things have been observed in the dental field. On the left, the impression is more accurate and precise compared to the analog impression. And that is why digital technology has become more popular. That is my first reason. The second reason is in the past, there were not that many materials that people could use to make prosthesis with using digital process. Surgical sites for application and people who used them were not that many. So, and there were not that many clinical cases where we can use them. Prostheses were primarily made with felspathic ceramic. When first 3D printers were introduced, the materials that were available was resin for model making. And there were also materials for making temporaries. However, these have developed and as shown, there are different discs available like wax on the left. Wax can be milled. PMMA can be milled to express the pink gingival part of the denture. On the right is metal. It's cobalt chrome metal. It's soft metal. It's not fully centered because if it's fully centered, it's difficult to mill. And there are so many types of material in different forms and a lot of companies offer these options. In other words, second reason is increase in the available materials. Third is the advancement of CAD CAM software and devices, which are necessary to do milling and printing. As mentioned in the beginning, Digital processes require computers and the software is a must because we need to use computer. Software is much more complex and diverse than we could, ima we could have imagined. What I'm showing you is just the tip of the iceberg, but as shown, there are so many options for orthodontics, designing implant, there are various softwares available in the market and they are available from different companies. From user perspective, there are so many softwares that you can use. The device and machines have developed as well. And so many options are now available in the dental field. Now people can do digital technology much more easily. What you've imagined previously 
can now be a reality using the digital th machines and options more so than anything else. The reason why digital technology is being discussed more is the lowering of the prices. Digital device cost has reduced significantly. A decade ago, when I first bought oral scanner, it was about 90 million won. If I were to buy the exact same oral scanner now, it's about 15 million won, almost one tenth of the price. So this is quite a significant reduction in price. So do I feel sorry? Not really, because I've been using it very well for the past decade and I've been utilizing it in various cases and I've garnered a lot of experience and I think I bought time and experience. The cost of gold and human resources, they have increased significantly and that is why people are switching more towards digital technology. Let's think about the cost of gold crowns now. Depending on our economic situation or a global economic crisis, the gold price fluctuates and whenever the cost of gold goes up, the cost of gold goes up when economy deteriorates. If the economy takes a downturn, it becomes harder for dental clinics because the cost of gold crown goes up. And we cannot change the cost of gold crown depending on the market price of the day. The materials that can be used with digital technology for the past decades, the cost never increased. It has become cheaper and cheaper and price hike has never occurred despite currency fluctuations. Because the materials themselves, they can be found easily, be it ceramic or zirconia. Its minerals and, and resin can be made chemically, so they are not affected by economic conditions. Because the prices are very stable and there are more and more options coming out these days, the cost is being reduced. And you can choose good materials. Another reason is specialized dental services. As shown in a building, there are multiple dental clinics, two or three dental clinics per building, so there's fierce competition. And people want to specialize their treatments and they want to promote themselves differently so that they can appeal more to the patients. That's why they offer treatments like one-day treatment, customized abutments, and treatments using surgical guides, which is really popular these days. They have become a way to market different dental clinics. And these are the reasons why digital dentistry is getting limelight. The final part, I would like to go into more detail. One-day clinics. Without digital devices, you will not be able to do it. Taking impression, doing stone, and then doing casting. If you were to do it everything in manually, you will not be able to do it in a single day. And a couple of days at least are required for different steps. But with digital machines, you can skip a couple of steps. You can just take scan, design, and provide the prosthesis. It takes approximately 40 minutes per case. I do a lot of inlay, online and crown treatments, orthodontic treatment, and if wire is required, it's very good to take impression. If you were to take rubber impression, you need to take the wire out. If there's a utility wax under the bracket, you need to block them out. And then after that, you need to put them back in as a prosthodontist. It's quite troublesome. Laminate is one area where digital technology can be utilized a lot because laminate temporaries are very difficult to make, but it can be done very simply using the technology and it's been utilized a lot. Next is customized abutment. Austin has pre-milled blank and using this when you do milling within your dental clinic, you can make customized abutment fairly easily within 30 minutes.
Some clinics do it, others don't. At our clinic, we do not take this a step, but I'm going to talk more in detail in the milling lecture. If you, and if you don't have milling machine, using scanner, you can easily make digital customized abutments. Use scan body and scan once, and from the next step, you can send the data over to the lab and you can get customized abutment as well as zirconia crown very easily. It can be a way to provide a very specialized treatment as well. And this is very decisive. It's digital surgical guide. And this has been the main momentum behind the digital technology boost. I've actually used a digital guide to do surgery and it's very easy and fun to do surgery and it's very easy and the patients love it among the patients if they have had implants placed in the conventional way when you use surgical guide to do surgery they are quite surprised they always ask whether the surgery is really over and they're very pleased the satisfaction is very high dentists are not just the only ones who share the sentiment from implant companies it's a very good product because in order to make a surgical guide merging is required to create surgical guides in order to do merging two data is necessary ct data is necessary and for that cbct needs to be equipped in order to get scan data you need to have scanner implant companies are actually leading the dental field if you look at korea alone major five six implant companies including austin have led the boost in usage of implants and they're also leading the boom related to surgical guides and these companies are introducing different digital machines following the trend in order to create surgical guides you need to do oral scanning within your clinic and that is why a lot of implant companies have introduced a scanning machines for sale this is accelerated digital technology adoption. And that was how it all started. The surgical guide, which was designed for the implant company to continue to fabricate it and to provide it, efficiency dropped and the usage rate was limited. The company started to wonder what if the dental clinics made them themselves and at the time 3D printers were starting to be introduced in different dental clinics. Because there was such nice timing, the implant company started to promote that you be able to make your own surgical guides. In line with that trend, 3D printers became rapidly distributed and all implant companies sell 3D printers. Now we have made customized abutment which goes on top of the implant. These days we use zirconia crowns which goes on top of that. It has been used about two decades ago and now implant companies are saying that you can make your zirconia crowns within the dental clinics. And in that context, they're creating and providing milling machines. In other words, digital technology has been around us for the past 20 or 30 years, but now with a paradigm shift, things are changing rapidly, and that is why the title of my lecture is Paradigm Shift. And that is, and the such changes have led to increase in usage of digital technology. There's another reason for the momentum, and it had to do with the timing. It's related to making temporary crowns. There was a legal issue. Temporary crown is a must-have in dental clinics. And up until recently, uh, the hygienists have fabricated them and set did the setting. But this became problematic. If you look at the dental technician law, Within the law regarding temporary, hygienists can attach and remove the temporary prosthesis. However, it does not include fabricating temporary prosthesis. And there was controversy within different professions. 
Question was made to the Ministry of Health and Welfare, and official response came out. And the response said that within dental clinic, hygienists cannot fabricate temporary prosthesis. And this was announced in 2018 as an administrative order. Because it's the law, the local clinics have to follow. Then the question is, who's going to make the temporary prosthesis? Dentists have to look after the patients. How many dentists work with lab technicians within the dental clinic? It'll be too much for the dentist to handle that. It takes a lot of time to create temporary prosthesis, and in terms of efficiency, it was very bad. And at that moment, 3D printer was introduced. The companies selling 3D printers welcomed this news with open arms, and they started to promote that with 3D printer, printers, you can make temporary prosthesis within dental clinics. And as a result, a lot of dental clinics started to buy 3D printers. I think this was another decisive reason behind the increase in adoption of digital technology. And because of various reasons that you've mentioned, digital technology has been more adopted in the dental field. And thank you for clarifying that. How many digital devices do you have in your dental clinic? I'm sure you have a lot, yes. At the beginning, for what reason did you introduce digital device in Seoul Line Dental Clinic? In 2012, I started using digital devices. I'm primarily focused on prosthodontics like you, and I've always had a lot of interest in digital devices. The primary reason I had such interest was because of accuracy and precision. And the level of accuracy and precision, I always wondered whether I could apply that clinically. And I tried to find the right timing to apply these digital devices to cl clinically. And from the devices that were introduced in 2012 that fit my criteria, I used a ceramic for one day treatment. That was the beginning. And as I continued on, the utilization rate of digital technology increased in the dental field. And surgical guides were also introduced and more and more people start to make their own temporary prosthesis. I've continued to add on a number of digital devices. I first started to use these digital devices because I wanted to stand above the others and differentiate myself. Thank you for your response. So please carry on with your lecture. That was the reason why people's attention to digital technology soared. What is the relation with the dentist and digital technology and how will it affect the clinical aspect? As shown on the screen, the robot and the dentist are holding hands. Will robot provide dental treatment? I think there's still some time left. In 2017, robot conducted implant surgery in China. But as shown in the image, there were dentists all around. They were controlling the robot and the computer to do implant surgery. I think it had more to do with showing people that this was possible rather than this being applied clinically to treat patients. On YouTube, there are many videos on whether robots will replace dentists eventually. It will take some time up until AI will replace dentists. Dentists are viewed as very difficult to replace because most of the time, dentists use their hands to do something. And that's just the nature of our work. Digital dentistry or digital dental clinic is not something on the left, but is more closer to what is on the right because Dentists will be able to use different devices and materials to provide a digital treatment. And I think this is the path that lay ahead for us as digital dentists. I'm showing you various devices related to digital dental clinic. Using these devices, 
There are many things we can do, creating model, wax up, zirconia, implant, crown, custom abutment, even digital dentures can be made. Digital technology is seeping into various aspects of dental field. I believe transition into digital dentistry is unavoidable. Do you remember this TV program? I used to love it. Lee Hui Jae, a celebrity, comes out and in a given situation, he chooses scenarios A or B. I used to enjoy it very much. These days, it has re it has been replaced with Peng Su program called Peng Seng Theater. Once you've made the decision to utilize digital technology, even then there are a lot of confusion. There are so many talks about digital technology, so it can be very confusing for first-timers. I would like to emphasize that what I have talked about and what I will talk about is entirely based on my personal opinion. I think I should have mentioned this from the start. In other words, there is no set definition or answer. It is based on our clinical experiences and I'm just talking about my personal experience in te digital technology and I'm not saying that this direction is the correct direction. And a lot of people talk about different directions because there is no set answer. In this lecture, I would like you to hear me out and also I encourage you to listen to other people's lectures on this topic as well. To, to form your own opinion. Once you've made the decision to adopt a digital technology, if there's only myself to deal with the devices or softwares, it's either of the two. You need to enjoy the increased amount of work and think of late night work as a bliss. You might need to work late hours up to 10 or 11 p.m. designing and milling alone, but if you're happy, that's it. People spend entire nights putting together plastic models. In that sense, it's very positive, but a lot of people choose a different path. Work continues to grow, and with increased number of devices, there's more work because you need to calibrate and figure out what caused problem. And it will cause you to get off work late, and some people suffer. If you have a dedicated someone who's going to address these devices and softwares, it's fine. Then you need to only concern yourself with cost efficiency, whether there's ROI. However, if there's so much work and if you suffer due to late working hours, I would like to propose you to change your mindset. If your clinic is sizable or if you're interested in prosthodontics and have a lab in your clinic or if the number of patients increase in your clinic, if you find going back and forth labs as too troublesome, if you decide to make a lab within your clinic, lab-related work can grow. From wax up, burnout, and casting, I am using this image without receiving permission from Dr. Kim gi -sung. I made a request to Dr. Kim gi -sung because he has a lab, whereas I don't. So I asked for this image. When you make a lab, you don't expect a dentist to come out late, come out and work late hours to do that. It's interesting. I do not agree. There are various lab work that is required. You need to make investment, and it's quite complicated even if we use digital technology. In terms of digital technology, the process that is shown here can be replaced with lab software and lab machine. Even casting can be done using lab machine. From clinician's perspective, there are areas that need to be done by us, and using lab software, the digitalized lab needs to be done by someone 
else. That's my opinion. Some people think like this. In the past, I did not even imagine myself doing casting or wax up, but because the process become more swifter with digital technology, if you want to do it, you can do it. But I believe that clinicians need to focus on others. For example, you need to consider how you should prep so that you can use digital devices well, or how to bond or cement prosthesis made with digital technology. There's dedicated clinical software. There's software like Implant Studio for designing surgical guides and implants. I think defining roles and responsibilities is very important. Dentist, hygienist, lab technician. All three job groups, depending on different clinics, you need to divide and conquer. And this is absolutely necessary even if you use digital technology. If you have made the decision to utilize more digital technology, there are so many devices and softwares that are available in the market. You cannot do them all at once. And at times, it's very confounding as to where to start. I would like to talk about four major factors of digital clinic. I'm about to show you. These are the four major factors. First is scanner and a few different types of software, milling machine and 3D printer. I think with these four, it's sufficient. There are so many but you think that these four would suffice. Is there a special reason why you have made these choices? Actually, I have all the devices that I've shown you ahead. I actually do have all the devices that were shown. But I didn't start off like that. At first, I just had scanner and milling machine. And as I expanded the machines, also expanded as well. First, I think the most important thing is cost efficiency. Cost effectiveness is very important. By investment, not just money, but effort is included. You need to start off where you can get most out of your effort. And later words, you need to bring more devices based on cost efficiency. And I would like to talk about learning curve. When you study, you need to start from easy stuff. Then you get the desire to overcome difficult areas. If you face the most difficult part from the beginning, then you lose the momentum. You need to find it interesting to keep on learning. If you like it, you'll be more up for the challenge. That was the standard that I had. The uh, things that I've mentioned earlier, I love late night lab work. I hate l late hours. Rather than these, I think you need to be happier and you need to utilize digital technology in this end. This is my introduction related to digital dentistry course. If you could expand it. Rather than focusing on what is difficult, new, or what it requires a lot of investment, I think clinical aspect is just another tool that makes your life easier, faster, and more accurate. That is why I chose these four themes. This is my clinic. It's a very small, as you can see. I'm working with three staff. We have been using these machines very well. This is an image that I, has been recently taken. You look happy. Yes, I didn't force smiles on their face. We look happy and the clinic is very clean even though we have been using for 10 years. If you use digital technology, it can be maintained clean because you don't need impression stone or plaster. When you go to lab, at times it can be very dirty. So you can do without those things. You can maintain clean environment. What I want to tell you is that I'm not a huge fan of Pengsu, but my staff does. 
Peng Su has said that negative people have no help and you need to talk to positive people. And I think this summarizes my thoughts very well. I'd like to thank you for listening to my lecture. I'm going to talk about the four digital factors that I've mentioned earlier more in detail with cost effectiveness at the heart of it. Thank you for the good lecture. Thank you. Because of time constraint, we're going to move on to Q&A session to address the questions raised by the viewers. There are many questions raised. ID Suhan, thank you for the good lecture. ID Bomb Bomb, digital is truly the trend. ID Romero, you have many amazing machines. Do you need all of that to do digital dentistry? You already explained, but could you answer the question? Sure. That is not true at all. I'm going to discuss this on the next lecture, but the most important in a dental clinic is oral scanner. It has the best cost effectiveness and using this alone, you can start your digital journey sufficiently. When you think about analog days after you do a prep and take impression, that is basically the end of dentist's role. Okay, pouring stone, that's the work of the lab. From dentist's perspective, after you take impression, it's all done. Digital is the same. You take impression using oral scanner when you're using digital technology, and you can end your journey there. The rest of the four factors have been mentioned so that you can utilize your scanner better. And if you use these four factors well, some people want to do more. Some people may want to try orthodontic treatment or endodontic treatment. If such urges come up, you can add one by one. Don't worry too much. Dr. Chun se also does orthodontic treatment. Yes, you can expand the scope gradually. ID Mike has raised a question, depending on the size and tendency of your hospital, the composition may differ. So what kind of differences are there? So what should you do depending on the size and tendency? I think there is a clear difference. If you have a small clinic like mine, the space itself is quite tight. Let me give you an example with a scanner. In my clinic, there are only three unit chairs, so you can just wheel it around. However, if the size of the clinic, it increases, it's very difficult to wheel it around. In those cases, you can use wireless scanners. Because it's wireless, you don't need to wheel it around, but you can use it like a magic wand. You just need to carry the wireless oral scanner. Even with a scanner example alone, there can be difference in terms of clinic size. A wireless scanner is slightly five to six million one more expensive. But I want to talk about cost effectiveness. Five to six million won is really nothing in terms of cost effectiveness. For small clinics, it's too much. But if your clinic is sizable, it really isn't. And it's the same for a lot of machines. Depending on the size of your clinic, you may need something or may not. And there are clear differences. So I'm going to keep your question in mind, Mr. Mike, and I'll add more contents to my next lecture to be able to answer your question. Mr. Mike, you need to listen to the next lecture, for sure. Dr. Yi Suyong, thank you for your responses. Because of time constraint, we will end Q&A session now. The next prosthodontics on Friday will address more in-depth digital dentistry. I'm sure you're going to provide more insight, although you have done an excellent job today. I want to help you get an easy landing. Yes, I look forward to your next lecture.
Thank you for watching Prosthodontics on Friday. We have talked about paradigm shift on digital technology. If your questions were not addressed during the live session, we will address them via replies. Regarding the live pop-up event, you can check whether you have one at the dental site. For the 10 winners, coffee coupon will be sent via text message right now. To the winners, I would like to extend my congrats. I would like to close this session by informing you that we have six digital special lectures prepared over the course of next three months, which addresses components of digital dentistry to digital implant guides. It's getting quite late, and thank you for watching up until this point. Thank you once again.